The first research tip that I've got for you is to produce a graph every week. You want to be results focused. You want to kind of ignore the rest of the noise that goes on in academia and remember that really to produce papers, to write your thesis, you need results to talk about. So produce a figure, a table, a schematic every single week without fail. Having that goal means that the rest of your week is all planned around getting that table, graph, schematic results, whatever it is, so that you can talk about it. This is important because regular supervisor meetings, you'll talk about these results. It means that you'll have different results to put into papers into your thesis, you have to be results focused. If you're not results focused and you haven't got a goal for yourself to produce a figure, a schematic, a table, or whatever it is every single week, then you're going to fall behind very quickly. It can even be a failure table, a failure figure, like I did this and it failed. Look in the, the magical, spectacular ways it failed. That is also okay, but it is important to be results driven throughout your PhD and throughout research in general. So there's your first tip. We often hear about choosing the right principal investigator or research supervisor, but we don't hear about what to do after you've chosen one. It is very, very important to manage up, to manage your PhD supervisor or your principal investigator because they are not going to manage you. A lot of PhD research supervisors are very hands-off. They don't want to sort of like be involved and also they're far too busy to be dealing with the minutia of your research. So you need to get used to managing them. When do you have meetings? Let them know and give them an option obviously. Don't tell them what to do because that will really piss them off. But importantly, just make sure you have an agreement on when you're going to meet. Make sure you go with solutions, not problems. Make sure you listen to them, make sure that you understand what they get sort of energized by. One of my PhD supervisors, every time I saw him, I made sure I had a new result to talk about. That's because I realized that he was energized by this and I would get the best from him as a supervisor if I led with something exciting and fun and it just made for a great relationship um, and he was always excited to come and see me. So that is what I mean by managing up. You need to make sure you are the kind of like uh, force that's moving your project and you're not just sat back waiting for your supervisor to tell you what to do. Manage the project, manage your supervisor, get used to what they like and that will make your PhD and your research just go so much more smoothly. Give it a go. The third research tip I've got for you is to schedule failure. Now, here's the thing, is that when we're sort of like planning a research project, we get very excited on what we're going to achieve, that we sometimes get completely kind of blinkered in just to thinking like, oh, this is the stuff we'll do. But there's so much more that goes into research. You'll be solving problems you didn't even think were going to be a problem, such as, how do I get access to that lab? That door doesn't open. That person's going on holiday. I'm not going to be able to see them for two weeks, which puts back all of this stuff for two weeks. Like, those are the problems that you actually find in research. In my experience, it was very sort of like um, procedural problems rather than academic and research problems that held me back. So that means for you, when you're thinking about a research project or when you're planning to do something, you need to think to yourself, what is the worst thing that could happen? What could delay this project and plan for that? Don't say to your supervisor, I'll have that in two weeks. Say, I'll have it in four weeks, just to give yourself a little bit of a buffer. You want to get used to scheduling in failure. Yes, you want to get used to scheduling in failure because that is a very, very important part of research and uh, it's a lot of stuff that you didn't even think would be a problem that really sets you back. Now, if you get one thing from this video, let it be this. You need to learn to manage risk. I've got a whole video, go check it out here and I'll put a link at the end about managing risk. This is so very important. Risk should be approached as if you're a hedge fund manager. You can't just put all your eggs in one basket. You need to hedge your bets a little bit, which means that you need to do like easy experiments, stuff you know will get you results with the more risky, like uh, long-term projects just to manage all that risk. Now, there's loads of things that go into managing risk and that video I've just mentioned goes into all of it. But essentially, if you've got a really risky thing in your PhD, make sure you do it early so you can fail and move on or find the thing that works within it. This is quite often the sort of like damaging aspect of any person's PhD or research is when they start to panic towards the end 
end of their PhD time or their, you know, funding time, and they start doing even riskier stuff when that should have been done really upfront. The last parts of a project, if you've managed the risk well, should be almost enjoyable. Dare I say it, apart from the writing up stuff, I've never enjoyed that. But it should be enjoyable because you've got the stuff that works, you've filtered out all the stuff, you've put your risk up the front, which means you're not doing risky stuff now. Maybe you're chucking a little bit of risk just to spice things up bloop, a little bit, but it is important that you manage risk properly. Go check out that video after this one because I think it's the most important video you'll ever watch as a PhD student and researcher. We don't like to do it, do we? We do not like to kill our experiments that we love. There's loads of sort of like little things that go into research and we are attracted to some things more than others, but it's very, very important that you identify what's failing and get rid of it quickly. Just be upfront with your supervisor and say, this didn't work, I've given it a go for a week, but I just don't see it working within the reasonable amount of time, whatever it is, just to make sure that everyone's on the same page, but get rid of those losers early. It is a sort of like thing of human psychology where we want something to work that will never work. We spend so much time working on it that we should have cut it off ages ago. And it's not until we've start sunk a load of time and we've even sort of like got deeper into that sunk cost fallacy that we finally go, oh, it's not going to work and then you feel bad because you've wasted all this time. So if something isn't working early on, given a reasonable amount of time where you think it should work, cut it even if you love it. We tend to hold on to those losers too long and we do not double down quick enough on the stuff that's working. So do that and just watch how it changes your research. Oh, this one's a little bit tough because when you're knees deep, in your research field and you're wading through the sludge, it can be very easy to get involved in the politics of your department, your university, and even your research field. I recommend to early PhD students and researchers stay away from all of those politics, stay away from all of those things that uh, just really detract from your enjoyment a lot of the time of the research field. It's very easy to get sucked into someone's negativity. And don't get me wrong, I was the negative person towards the end of my research career because I was so sad. Uh, but importantly, don't get sucked in to people like me who are in a downward spiral. You need to make sure you remember why you're in research and it's very easy to get sucked into someone's like gossip or someone's beef with someone else. Whatever it is, do not get sucked in. Stay out of the politics for as long as possible. You know, sometimes you do have to side with someone in academia and be like, oh yeah, no, that was very bad. Oh, I can't believe they did that. But it's very, very damaging in the long term for everything, for your mental health, for your career. And I I've seen some really, really great professors get sucked into this negativity hole and really struggle to get out of it. And in fact, one of the most sort of like upbeat professors that I've ever worked under and ever worked with, I don't think you'd mind me saying his name, Dr. Drew Evans, was a pleasure to work with. Everyone wanted to collaborate with him because nothing was ever a problem, even though sometimes it, you know, for him, I'm sure it was tough. But positivity goes a long way and uh, departmental politics and other politics just really suck that enjoyment enjoyment from research, so avoid it for as long as you possibly can. The last tip I've got for you is probably one of the most important in this list, and that is you need to find something rewarding or energizing outside of research that you can do regularly. For me, I used to love and still do actually play Brazilian samba in a big batteria. I drum. Um, I've also had hobbies over the past that I have found very rewarding and energizing. No matter what it is, you need to find something, just one thing that maybe is a little bit social even if you're that way inclined but it's important that you have something rewarding outside so that when stuff inside your research isn't going so well, um, you have the ability to lean on something else and go, you know, I've still got this. And it sounds a bit sad, doesn't it? Like everything's falling apart in your research. Be like, at least I've got this lovely little thing that I love and enjoy. But that's just the reality of research. You need to find something that you can find, I guess, uh, maybe even, I'll even use the word passion or purpose. You even need something that you can get, you know, that sort of feeling from outside of academia. Because if you put all your eggs in one basket, you're going to be very, very sad at some point. And uh, no one wants that, do they? Next, I think you should watch this, which is the most important video I've made for academics on this channel. Go check it out.